as it starts to encounter uh, the air, um, we use um, grid fins because grid fins uh, look like sort of like a waffle. Um, but they work quite well across a wide regime from both very high velocity um, hypersonics through supersonic, transonic, and subsonic. Um, so it's hard, to, it's, it's hard to have aerosurfaces that work well across that entire regime. Welcome back, space enthusiasts. After the unexpected halt of the catch attempt during Flight 6, SpaceX has soared back into action with a thrilling success in Flight 7, successfully catching the Super Heavy booster. This monumental achievement brings the company one step closer to its audacious goal of fully reusing Starship by 2025, with aspirations to eliminate refurbishment by 2026. But hold on, this victory comes with its own set of concerns. Following stage separation, cameras captured a rare glimpse of potential issues with the grid fins, a detail that echoes similar challenges faced in previous test flights, but went largely unnoticed. While it doesn't affect the catch attempt, it will make it difficult to reuse later. So, what exactly transpired during this critical phase? And what solutions could SpaceX implement to address these challenges? Join us as we dive deep into today's episode. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. On January 16th, SpaceX amazed the world by catching the Super Heavy booster for the second time, following the first success in Flight 5. This accomplishment underscores the company's unwavering commitment to innovation and advancement, continually pushing the limits of aerospace engineering. This recent success can be credited to multiple factors, including resolving critical hardware issues on the launch and catch tower that had previously caused an abort during the catch attempt in Flight 6. Additionally, the seamless operation of various systems working together played a significant role. The booster must separate cleanly from Starship during ascent, then maneuver its descent using grid fins and precise engine burns. The performance of the Raptor engine must remain consistently reliable, while the communication system must withstand the tumultuous conditions of launch and landing to ensure proper synchronization for the catch. Central to this operation is the Mechazilla Tower, where its chopstick arms must perform a coordinated sequence to align with, grasp, and secure the booster. Despite those achievements, some have found out that the grid fin system on Booster 14 faced some challenges. Notably, around T plus 2 minutes and 55 seconds, following the hot staging maneuver, Booster 14's grid fins exhibited signs of warping, likely due to exposure to extreme heat. The hot staging technique allows the engines on the Starship to ignite while still attached to the booster. When the engines fired, the resulting flames appeared to impact the grid fins, as captured by camera angles from both the booster and the ship. Any damage to these fins could have serious implications for flight safety and performance. Frankly, on Flight 5, SpaceX also encountered similar problems with grid fins. Fortunately, this issue did not hinder the subsequent tasks of both Booster 12 and 14, as the grid fins continued to function effectively, aiding in a successful landing and making history. However, I believe SpaceX should consider enhancements to this system. Firstly, they should lower the position of the grid fins, which is already being implemented in the second version of the booster, to mitigate the effects during hot staging. Flight 7 utilized the original design, so the next version will clearly demonstrate this improvement. Secondly, transitioning to titanium grid fins, similar to those used on Falcon 9, could resolve this issue, although it has been controversial for a long time titanium can endure significantly higher temperatures without warping, thus enhancing reusability. This is a largely resolved problem. This also aligns with Elon Musk's goal to get to zero refurbishment on the Starship rocket after each flight next year. The first version of the grid fin on Falcon 9 designed by SpaceX was made of aluminum and measures 4 by 5 feet. In order to survive the extreme conditions during re-entry, 
It required a heat shield coating that needed to be applied after each mission. SpaceX then improved upon its first design and in June 2017 flew their first mission with its new titanium grid fins. Elon Musk said, the improved version of the grid fin is made out of a single piece cast and cut titanium and is able to resist the re-entry heat without shielding. It is slightly heavier than the shielded aluminum version but has more control authority and can be reused indefinitely with no touch-ups. However, Elon decided against using titanium grid fins on Starship. To eliminate costly non-essential materials from the designs of both Starship and Super Heavy. Steel is generally more affordable than titanium, which can be 20 to 40 times pricier per unit weight due to its complex production process. The transition from Falcon 9's aluminum grid fins to titanium required SpaceX to manufacture the world's largest single-piece titanium casting, and Musk has often noted the high expense of each grid fin. Given their cost, Musk and SpaceX appear to be steering future rockets away from large titanium castings. Nonetheless, Super Heavy still requires substantial grid fins, prompting Musk to announce that they would be constructed from welded steel instead of titanium. Although the 301 series stainless steel initially used has a melting point and heat capacity about 15% lower than grade 5 titanium, its strength characteristics are comparable and it remains mechanically functional at nearly three times the working temperature of titanium, 840 degrees Celsius versus 330 degrees Celsius. Most importantly, 301 steel is approximately 15 to 20 times cheaper than titanium and fabricating large steel components, especially through welding rather than casting, is significantly faster, easier, and more economical. Additionally, repairing or replacing fins in the rare event of damage would be straightforward and inexpensive. However, as previously mentioned, the drawback of steel grid fins is their reduced durability under extreme heat. Therefore, SpaceX will need to find alternative solutions to protect this component without reverting to titanium materials. For reusable rockets like Starship and Falcon, the grid fins are crucial for landing the booster. These fins, a type of flight control surface originally developed by the Soviet Union over 50 years ago, consist of a lattice of smaller aerodynamic surfaces within a box structure. Their unique design often leads to comparisons with waffle irons or potato mashers. Starship's grid fins are notably sharp and pointed, resembling shark teeth, which might explain their nickname potato mashers. This design not only adds an intimidating aesthetic, but also serves a functional purpose. The curves help minimize drag, particularly at supersonic speeds, which is vital for missiles and rockets with limited fuel. The hyperbolic curve of the leading edge reduces wave drag, allowing the grid fins to function effectively as lift and control surfaces for supersonic flight vehicles. Super Heavy utilizes grid fins to manage aerodynamic pitch during descent back to Earth and to facilitate mid-air recovery. One primary function of Super Heavy's grid fins is to control aerodynamic pitch. As the booster descends, the fins can adjust yaw and roll. SpaceX aims to catch the booster mid-air using Mechazilla, which requires precise control with minimal margin for error. Therefore, Four grid fins are essential for steering the booster accurately during its flight. Additionally, these grid fins assist in controlling Super Heavy's descent. They help orient the booster while also slowing it down as it falls at high speeds. Fortunately, after stage separation and with most of its propellant expended, Super Heavy will be significantly lighter. While the curved design of the grid fins reduces drag, they also feature an X-shaped grid that generates some drag for stability, aiding in slowing down before landing burns. Importantly, these fins are fixed and do not fold during launch. They remain fully extended instead of being tucked away. This design choice doesn't hinder ascent due to Super Heavy's immense power and mass. The combined weight of Starship and over 30 Raptor engines 
far outweighs any drag caused by the extended fins. The substantial size and steel construction of the fins is necessary to endure the forces experienced during launch and landing, while ensuring durability for multiple uses. As part of SpaceX's reusable launch system development program, initiated in 2012, advancements in grid fin technology have been pivotal. The first hypersonic flight test featuring grid fins occurred in February 2015, leading to their use in all reusable Falcon 9 test landings and increasing successful first stage recoveries after December 2015. This innovation has enabled SpaceX to achieve significant economic benefits through the reuse of Falcon 9 boosters. The grid fins on SpaceX's Starship and Falcon 9 serve similar purposes in controlling descent and landing, yet they exhibit significant differences in design, material, and functionality. Falcon 9 utilizes titanium grid fins that are approximately 2 meters by 1.2 meters in size and are mounted at 90-degree angles to enhance control during flight, particularly in the pitch axis. They are designed to retract during ascent to minimize drag, only deploying when the rocket begins its descent. In contrast, the Super Heavy booster, which is part of the Starship system, features much larger grid fins measuring around 7 meters by 3 meters. These fins are constructed from welded steel rather than titanium. Furthermore, they don't have a folding system, meaning that they can only swivel in either direction. This aims to reduce mass and complexity. Each grid fin on Super Heavy weighs about 3 metric tons, making them approximately 20 times heavier than those on Falcon 9. This substantial weight is necessary to ensure durability under the intense forces experienced during launch and landing, as well as to maintain structural integrity during high-speed maneuvers. Unlike Falcon 9's retractable fins, Super Heavy's grid fins remain fully extended throughout ascent and descent, a design choice that allows for immediate aerodynamic control but potentially increases drag during the initial launch phase. While the curved design of Super Heavy's grid fins aims to minimize drag during descent, their fixed position means they also create some drag that can aid in slowing the booster down before landing burns. This contrasts with Falcon 9's approach where minimizing drag during ascent is prioritized. Both systems rely on grid fins for stability and control during descent. However, Super Heavy's design necessitates precise maneuvering capabilities due to its ambitious goal of mid-air recovery using Mechazilla, which demands exact positioning with little margin for error. The differences in grid fin design between these two rockets highlight SpaceX's evolving engineering strategies as they adapt to the challenges of reusability and performance in aerospace engineering. Ultimately, while both Falcon 9 and Starship utilize grid fins as critical components for landing operations, their distinct materials and configurations reflect different design philosophies tailored to their respective missions within SpaceX's broader objectives of cost reduction and enhanced performance in space travel. As we stand on the brink of a new era in space exploration, where commercial spaceflight is becoming a reality and humanity's ambitions to explore the cosmos are more resolute than ever, SpaceX's Starship emerges as a beacon of hope. Hopefully, SpaceX will successfully address the shortcomings of previous test flights so that future test flights become more reliable.